Hi boys and girls, I'm glad you all, you all could be with me today. Today we're going to talk about um, the things that other people will say about how, God, how the world was created and how we were created and uh, what the Bible says <clears throat> is the truth and we can always go to the Bible for the truth and you know not everything that everybody says, not everything you learn at school is going to be wrong, but when talking about creation, uh, you're going to hear a lot of things that are not true, and you need to go to the Bible to find out what is true. Okay, one of the things that people say is everything just happened to end up perfectly designed. Well, I'm gonna, I've got my Bible glasses on. And I want y'all to put your Bible glasses on. And we're going to read God's Word and, and find out what the truth is. From, from looking at God's Word and keeping God, uh, our Bible glasses on, we learn that God made every plant, every animal, and person. Everything didn't just happen to turn out perfectly. I mean, would anybody look at a computer or a plane and say it just happened? Really intelligent people built and created those things. Just as intelligence is required in build, uh, when building a computer or plane, intelligence is shown <clears throat> in the design of each living thing. Check out these examples, for instance. The giraffe. The giraffe is the tallest animal in the world. They have a really long neck. You'd think that when the giraffe lowers its head, that all the blood would rush down to its brain and its brain would explode. But that's not the way God planned for that uh, giraffe to be able to lower its head and that not happen. Feel the pulse in your neck. That's your heart beating and sending blood throughout your body. Uh, our heart is about the size of our fist. But God gave the giraffe a huge heart. It's about two feet long and weighs 25 pounds. And it pumps blood all the way up that long neck to his brain. And he gave it, uh, the giraffe, tight skin to, to uh, force the blood upwards. Try to bend over as far as you can. We have, we have a short neck, so it's not hard for us to do that. But when a giraffe bends over to drink, all that blood should come rushing down its long neck and kill it. But that's not what happens because that's not the way God designed it to happen. Uh, God designed something like little sponges to allow just the right amount of blood to flow. He also designed the giraffe to keep its legs apart, open, uh, spread apart while it drinks so it doesn't fall over. Act like you're, I mean, act like you're dizzy. That's not hard for me to do. <laughs> uh, the giraffe should be with that long neck, but God gave it seven neck bones so it can lower and raise its head safely without getting dizzy or even dying. Let's see your tongue. Stick your tongue out. It's okay to stick your tongue out this time, but as a rule, don't do that. Uh, God gave the giraffe a very different tongue from ours to go with such a long neck. God gave it a really long tongue, about 18 to 20 inches. That's a long tongue. You can see that all these parts of the giraffe would have, been, uh, would have to be in the right place from the very start from the giraffe to sur survive. It couldn't have slowly evolved one part and then another part. It would have died in the process. It all had to work or none of it would work. Okay, like uh, tiny insects. You may think that tiny insects are simple little creatures, but they are really quite amazing. The abilities, the, the uh, little speck of a brain that an insect has will blow your mind. For example, ants can find the shortest route uh, to their food sources. Their ability to, to do this amazes the most brilliant si uh, computer programmers who can't match their efficiency. The whole ant colony is highly organized as they go about this amazing process, all working together to get their food uh, and bring it back by the shortest routes. 
Isn't it something that to picture a whole team of the most brilliant scientists being outwitted by little ants? How about butterflies? Butterflies can fly enormous distances and make it exactly back to their starting points. They're perfectly programmed to do this by God. Bees and ants have really complicated social networks and, and ways of communicating. They communicate by touch and smell, constantly touching each other to pass on the nest odor. All right, another uh, thing that people say that is not true is the universe is billions of years old. Well, we know, we just said it in God's Word, that it's about 6,000 years old. Uh, but have you, have you ever read in a book or, or watched on a nature program and heard them or seen at a museum or a zoo and they say, you know, the earth is billions and billions of years old? Well, put your Bible glasses on and think about Genesis 1, which we studied a lot about yesterday. Uh, remembering God's word, tell me how many days it took to create the whole world. Six, that's right. And keeping your Bible glasses on, we learned that the universe began how many years ago? 6,000. Every time you hear something about millions and billions of years old, beware because someone is wearing man's glasses and sharing man's opinion. Billions of years of history isn't what God teaches in his word, so it can't be true. But you know what else? Billions of years isn't even good science. Scientists base ideas, the idea of billions of years on methods they've invented to figure out the age of the earth. These dating methods aren't always accurate. So the conclusion they come up with aren't accurate either. For instance, a volcano erupted in 1986. Now I know you don't remember that because you weren't born yet. But I was born, I was about 35 years old when that happened, and I remember it very clearly. Uh, but the, the volcano is called Mount St. Helens, and it's in Washington State. We know the volcanic rock that formed there after the volcano erupted is about 30 years old. Yet the dating methods gave it an age of 2.8 million years old. Also, rocks known to be fewer than even 70 years old from a New Zealand volcano were given dates of three and a half million years. So if you think that the universe is about 6,000 years old, wave your hands above your head. If you think the universe is billions of years old, pat yourself on the head. <laughs> All right. Some people say that animals and people are, have, have similar features, which shows we're related. Nod your head if you've ever heard that people came from ape-like creatures. I've heard that. Now put your Bible glasses on and think about Genesis 1. This would mean that an ape-like creature could be your great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather. No way. God clearly tells us in his word that he made people unique with diff and different from animals. The evidence of similar features doesn't prove evolution. It just shows that we have a common designer, God. We have some similar features, but we're also very, very different. God only made people in his image. Only people can create beautiful works of art and read complicated books and speak many different languages and appreciate beauty. So remember that each one of you is dearly loved by God and is precious to him. You are not just an animal. If you think people came from ape-like creatures, scratch like a monkey. If you think that God made animals animals and people people, take a bow. I'm taking a bow. <laughs> okay, now something else people talk about is order and disorder. Your Bible glasses on and remember Genesis 1. Did God create everything in an orderly way or a big mess? Right. It was orderly. In fact, the Bible even describes God as a God of order. 
I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. And it says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Okay, so God is a God of order. From looking at Genesis and keeping your Bible glasses on, we learn that things are going from best, which perfect, when God created the world, it was perfect, uh, to worse. Think about the perfect Garden of Eden, and then think about uh, our world now. We have, we have famine, we have war, we have earthquakes, we have tsunamis, uh, we have sickness and death. And you'll see evidence of that. But you know what else? In real life, the longer things are around, the more disordered and broken down and worn out these things become. Think of your refrigerator. Isn't it true that if you left it on its own, the longer the food was inside, the more disgusting it would become? Yuck, I'm not eating that green and moldy stuff. <laughs> So if you think the world came about by itself and went from a big mess to being orderly, turn around in a circle. If you think that God made it orderly from the beginning and actually, and it's actually getting worse as time goes by, wave your hands back and forth. By the way, the good news is someday it will be perfect again. Some people think that man is the ultimate source of knowledge. Scientists can be very smart and know lots of things, can't they? They have uh, thought of many wonderful inventions and things that help us in the world. But are scientists and other people perfect? I'm certainly not, and they're not either. Can they make mistakes? Oh, yes, everybody makes mistakes. Even really, really smart people? Yes. <clears throat> I'm th thankful for the minds that God has given people and the things that he has enabled them to do and to invent. But people don't know everything and they can be very wrong. Here are just a few examples of mistakes smart people have made. Okay. One example is scientists used to think that the sun revolved around the earth. Well, now we know that the earth actually revolves around the sun. So they were wrong about that. Okay. Scientists used to believe that people were getting sick with malaria because of bad air from the swamps. <clears throat> now, we, now we know that it's caused from a bite from an insect, a mosquito, an infected mosquito. Scientists used to believe that using mercury helped people live longer and healthier lives. So they'd put mercury in ointments and cosmetics. Now we know that it's toxic, and that means it's poisonous, and it can cause a lot of harm and a lot of health, health problems for us. Proverbs 1, verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. There you go. Does this verse say that really smart scientists are in the beginning of knowledge? No, it does not. Does it say college professors are in the beginning of knowledge? No, it does not. The Lord is the source of all knowledge. Okay, I'm going to read 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. If our, heart, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Well, that's not a surprise to me. <laughs> I know he knows everything. Uh, so, who does it say knows all things? God. Would you rather trust man or trust God? Man's not perfect and God is, so who would you rather trust? I hope you all say God. So, if you want to trust in man's opinion, jog in place. If you want to trust in God and his word, Clap your hands. I hope you see how important it is to start from God's point of view and trust his word. The Bible is always right, and true science confirms the Bible's statement. Now, let's close this lesson in prayer. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
this lesson that we've had about uh, how you are orderly, you are, the all intelligence begins with you. Uh, man can't compare with you. And, and Lord, I just, I just thank you every day that intelligence doesn't stop and end with man because the world would be in a much, much worse condition than it is now. But you are an orderly God and a perfect creator. And we thank you for that. We're sorry for when we failed you, Lord, and, and not uh, taking care of things the way we should have. And, and we don't listen to your word, Lord. Please help us from now on to just depend on your word, to trust in your word, and to love you more every day. Thank, thank you for everything you've given us. And I'm sorry for all the things that I've done wrong, all my sins. For I pray in Christ's name. Amen.